Hey, aloha, welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for a really exciting episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Today, Dave Stevens is in the house, <laughs> fresh off the campus, and we got a, uh, uh, what do we call you? A uh, surprise guest, <laughs> Gordon Bruce has showed up I'm because surprised. we're talking about NIST, <laughs> we're talking about the cybersecurity <laughs> framework, we're talking about 800-171 compliance, and the whole state is having trouble with this. So I got some experts here to help me get through it. Now, see, I see even have work. slides, I, even, I have like images. So there's some stuff today. Oh, it's kind of like cool. a real show. Yeah, so you got to, we're going to have to do a brain dump. How come you Thanks never, for coming. How, how come you never did slides when I'd had the show? I, I, I did all of them. I did it today because I can't explain this stuff. I got to have some oh, props. Because you had Angus. Yeah, I do all the work and he'd take all the credit. Okay, all right, all right. Give me the far, the first slide one. So this is something that I, I was surprised that so many government contractors don't realize there's some cyber assurance associated with this basic safeguarding. And I want to read this to you, and I want you to tell me how many people are doing this. No, not, don't name names. I, no, 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 do that. No. No. All right, <laughs> access control, limited privileges, that's for like logging in, right? So uh -huh. giving admin, admin only, right? Right. Um, device auditing, data control, user auditing, user authentication, media disposal, mm -hmm. physical access control, visitor management, Communication and boundary control around the data, mm -hmm. uh, breach reporting, anti-malware, patch management, mm -hmm. periodic system scans, and audits. Now, you're responsible for that. This is not DFARS 800-171. This is if you do business with the federal government Correct. at all. At all. Right? Any, this any is rich. in your contract. This is the federal acquisition regulation. It's super tough for a small company to comply. The with first this, thing, the, the first thing you can do is shared logins. Yeah, but, like these are just sort of, thing, right? but these are just yeah, sort of allowed. statements, right? I mean, they're not, there's no real guidance. It just says you will do these things. You'll be, I mean, I'll read it to you. Limit information system access to authorized users. Yeah, sure. Okay. Everyone's mm -hmm. authorized. Everyone, nobody gets a login. So, right? so, <laughs> so you got, I guess, so, so the, the good news is there's a ton of workbooks out there that yes. the Fed has put together. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then we'll walk you through what those requirements are. Basic now, safeguarding. Basic yes. safeguard and such like that. So there's a plethora of information. And maybe there's almost too much, but plethora. it's there. Well, you brought plethora, plethora in here plethora. today. That's a good, good word, word man. of the day. Good word. So there's, there's a plethora of information out there that will help the, the, the client or anyone that's doing Fed related work walk through what they need to do. Now, you said it earlier, this is not inexpensive. No. You, well, you know, the basic right. safeguarding could or should be. This basic is stuff you ought to be doing anyway. anyway. Anyway, but you know yeah, what? Yeah. Let's go back and be real. Like, there's, there's a lot of non federal contractors out there that are not doing this either. Of course. Yeah, that's what's keeping well, so me from retiring. If, just you, if, you, reach, if you reach out yeah. and you email any of us, we will send you a copy, or you can just go online and Google basic safeguarding requirements for federal acquisition regulations. It's right. There's a really nice document. Like you said, the there's guidance work, there, and it's free. Work. And get it, and get to work on it, because this is stuff you should be doing really anyway. Yeah. The biggest problem, though, and I'm going to use another word of the day, yeah. uh -oh. as opposed to the plethora of information, yes. there's a dearth <laughs> of effort. A dearth oh. of effort. Oh. <laughs> there, there is a lack of of responsibility being taken by the, the smaller businesses, and mostly because they're like five people running the whole business, and they got to right. do all the work, and then you dump this on them yeah. on the front page of their contract. They're not looking at that. Yep. Well, they will next year. Next when, year. Oh, we're going to get to that. Okay. Yeah. They will next oh, year. oh, he okay. almost stole my whole episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're my slide number two, Can't my I show. the episode. Man. <laughs> so, spoiler, spoiler alert. Outside, right, right under the FAR, we've had the DFARS compliance, the right. Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations, which is a smaller subset of the FAR. FAR. Very particular. I might say a larger subset, really, in some ways. It's far more prescriptive. In the federal acquisition regulations, Jeez, basic really safeguarding guidance. Today. Right. Right. Now we got how many families? It's 14, 14 families. Dave knows. 14, 14, 14, 14 families. 14, yeah. 14 families here of stuff you need to take care of. Um, let's get to some, some professorial stuff here. <laughs> Walk us through I'm just in over general. This way. <laughs> Walk us through in general these, these, these families and sort of what, what they're about. Well, it's a combination of two things. It's the old FIPS 200. And mm -hmm. it's the new NIST rules, uh, some of them taken out from the 853, which is organizing for the, the huge government organizations, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is a subset of the controls for non-governmental organizations, but that are vendors of the federal government. And a lot of people don't understand that. This is for downstream. So if you're the federal government, I have a contract with you, and Gordon's subbing out to me, we all have to be compliant. We all have to be compliant. We're and all in big trouble. That's, that's hard when, when I'm Speak going to have to get you know, Gordon to sub for me. I got to say, hey, are you 800-171 compliant? If you're not, I can't put you on my 
RFI. RFI. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no contract. So we got 14 families, and they're broken down to about 110 controls. And those controls mean what you have to do to comply with that rule. Yeah. And and when you read the 800-171, it's a little vague. Okay. However, it does refer you to the document that is extremely specific, which is the 800-53. Oh. That sub rule will reference in NIST 800-171. It should be 3.3.5. And if you go to the 853, that's AC2, and it shows you a paragraph. This is how you comply. Yeah, right. It's exactly what you're supposed to do. It's highly prescriptive. So it's not mysterious, but it's not easy. But there is a workbook, too, and I'll, I, I keep referring to the workbook because mm. the workbook yes. distills it down even further, and it, it, it gives you the question to ask about yourself. Are oh, you talking about the 800-171A? The auditing document. The audit, well, it's it's no, it's a work. It's actually it's not even the auditing document. It's another workbook document. Oh, I missed that I this did. one. This is oh, really it's it. really neat. It says it asks you like the questions: Do you do this? Yes or no? Yeah. Do you do this? Do you do that? If then it tells you where you should be looking for, what you should be doing, and who you should be asking. It sort of kind of walks you through it, and it's free. Um, but it's it's a lot of work. So 110 points is a lot of work. That's that's a lot of work yeah, for a small business. The yes. 110 break down to some 400 plus. Check boxes like you're sort of oh, yeah. talking about. Yeah. So yeah. it's not, it isn't just four, it's nice to say 14 families. That's great. Each family's got mother, father, daughter, son, brothers, and you know, all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And right. then their, their kids, and then their kids' kids, and then so it just keeps going down. So, right. um, and then some of the rules might not apply to you. Yes. Which is a right. hard one. Which is another one. It's like, yes. well, does that or doesn't? I don't, yeah, right. like so, some of the questions about you know, wireless access for me, like I just say no. Like, no, just get rid of that piece, right? Because yeah, there's it's no wireless known vulnerabilities and yeah. side channel and all kind of stuff we don't want to deal with. So just right. how about no? Right. And you right. just say no. And then what? Yeah. What's your, what do you have to put on your check boxes? Oh, yeah, well. NA? NA. <laughs> NA. No, NA does. It's just like, no, we just don't allow wireless in our particular sure. environment. You have to so give you still have to describe yeah. what you do and then how you right. control for it. How yeah. do I yeah. stop someone yeah. from... Bringing in a wireless device. Bringing right? in their hotspot, right? Sure. Bringing in their mobile device and dropping it Turning down. Turning their, their phone onto to a personal hotspot. To a personal I mean, hotspot. Once they're on your Wi-Fi. Yeah. Dave once they're always does that in your in office. office. <laughs> right. I just <laughs> I open up a hotspot and plug my USB drive into their admin computer. Well, there's another one. Right. There you go. USB drive. <laughs> See? The USB drive. USB drive. Yeah. Yeah. These guys want to help, but they you got to watch them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Slide number three. Easy as security. Take all your people out of your company. Okay, this is important. Don't sign any contracts. Right. Um, <laughs> I wanted, the important thing I really want to talk about here is you can be 800 cap, 800 capable and not be in what we call GCC high in the FedRAMPed environment. But in order to do DFAR C and G, which is sort of like if the government decides, first of all, C says you, get a note, you must notify of a breach within 72 hours. Right. That's something you've got to do if you're a federal government contractor under DFARS. You don't get that with, with the normal GCC licensing. You can get it with GCC high. The G stuff says that you know where your data is, and if the government says, you know, we want to look at those hard drives, they can actually retrieve them from your provider, your CSP. So DFAR CNG requires FedRAMP 800 You know, I think you might as well just go ahead and get in the FedRAMP environment is my take on it. What do you guys think? Well, you should, I really think I suggest we should back up a little bit here for the people in the cheap seats. First of all, we're, looking at, we're looking at uh, Office, Office 365. 365. That's what I was going to do. There's equivalents of, of, of Google environments sure. in the enterprise, and there's also uh, Amazon Web Services. They have right. these government cloud for FedRAMP certified sure. organizations. GCC is government community cloud, and GCC High is yes. the DFARS you know, uh, environment, right. where you can't just, like you said, you can't just go and sign up. You have to show them a vendor like Summit 7. Yes. I have a letter saying this is on my contract. I need this. Yeah. And then they will migrate you over, and it's not cheap. It's not, yeah. And it's not easy. And so, you know, and there's only, I can't tell you how many GCC high um, Office 360. No, well, in, I mean in the state oh, of Hawaii. Oh, in Hawaii. In Hawaii, oh, wow. okay. So, to go so here's something that, that, yes. that, that people need to be let there. If you, if you fit into that middle box in that graphic that you have mm -hmm. there, and you're running Office 365 Home edition, <laughs> you've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, cannot, yeah. you cannot, and I'm not going to spoiler alert. You've got a problem, and you better be looking at getting migrated over to GCC High. There are only five companies authorized to sell GCC High in the United States. Only five. Huh? 
That's right. There's only five people that you can buy licenses for for GCC High in the entire country. Oh, yeah, because there might be other, obviously, there's, I know there's 150 FedRAMP providers, but maybe they do other services. Yeah, other services, but there's Microsoft five, licensing. Uh, yeah, you it. can. So you can't go to the Microsoft, the, op, the mic, Apple Store. You can't go to the <laughs> Apple Store and buy <laughs> Microsoft licenses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't go to the Microsoft Store and say, I want to go to uh, GCC High. Can I buy a license? No, no, uh, no, no. There's a whole process, and it takes, right now, they're what, three months? Backlogged, I think. Well, you can get you can get authorization to get the license right away. Then you just have to provide, as yeah, you said, your, your you contract. But you gotta wait to clause. get then on to a Fed ramp compliant. Stand up times I'm getting quoted is four to six weeks. So but here's a good question: Give or take. When you do that, when your company you're doing that now, did you have to come to them with a system security plan saying you are compliant? No, no. They they just wanted to know your size of mailboxes, and then they can project how long it's going to take to migrate your environment. But that's O three sixty five. Now you've also got Azure stuff. You need to migrate that as well. Right, and then so there's the, other also there's gaps between. So if you're running Office three sixty five E one that that yeah, particular the suite, one. there's a bunch of things that are not currently available in Office three sixty five GCC high. So there may be you're using a particular product within the E1 yeah. stack. It doesn't work within GCC. Yeah, I think you have now. to go three so, at minimum, right? I, yeah. think it's, I think it's enterprise E3. E3, yeah, well, E3, 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 E3 there's the, product, yeah, yeah, E3, and then they, they bolt on ATP. And, yeah, but and there's even gaps. Discussion. There's even gaps between E3 and GCC High. So there, speaking Microsoft's of the cheap seats again, yet. ATP is advanced threat protection and right. comes with the E3 license. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. And in tune, which Gordon says is not also not working in GCC High right now, I guess there's a bug, which I didn't read about. One more Microsoft? slide and we'll go to the break. This is just a real quick description of what's going on with FedRAMP by the numbers. Yeah, so that was what I was key. There's 150 um, um, uh, cloud security service providers in the FedRAMP environment. About 100 agencies are in there now from the Fed. Um, this, these would be federal agencies, not subcontractors or contractors like us. Um, and you can see that, you know, we've got four different baselines that the government's looking at, right? So, right. you know, you need to match that to the risk profile that you're going to be assessed with for the type of work that you do in your contract that the Correct. government gives you. And it will you. be on your contract. Yes. It will be, yes. Yeah. yes. And, and we'll talk, we're going to talk about how that's going to build out. So, all this game's changing. We've been talking about self-attestation to where we are with this for the government. We're going to talk about, in, when we come back, what's going to happen in this next year to change that game and start to audit your actual compliance levels. So we'll be back after we pay some bills in a minute. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. All right, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're having a lot of fun with the difficult topic. It was pointed out we could call this acronym city. So let's talk a little <laughs> bit about some of these acronyms. Yeah. All right. That we're that we're that we're bringing up here. Um, GCC. I think we government expanded community cloud on that right? right. So don't get confused with just GCC. You may need GCC high for your work with the federal government. Do your homework. Um, do your homework on some of the stuff. Homework's available at from NIST, from SANS, from CIS. So, Center for Internet City, Security. Here we go. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so a lot of these organizations, what, what's, your, what's your sort of in entry? Like, where would you advise people to go online to start to gather some of this information? Well, before I tell them to do that, I tell them to read their contract. See get, what they Get need. into their contract. Smart, the front yeah. page is going to say, for the DFARS, the regular DFARS clause, this is going to be this long number separate by uh, decimal points, and it ends in 7012. That's your first clue. Sure. NIST 800-171. If you have that on your contract, you can do research into 800-171, those 14 families. That's right. Then keep reading if it says C, G, or any of those others mm -hmm. that have to be in the sections, I think an L and M in your RFI or request for information. You have to uh, 
uh, comply with that level of security. And that and is a C that actually says you have to give your physical hard drives over, or is it G? Yeah, what, what happens is it's in, is so when you, if you use a cloud service provider, which when I ask this in a room, almost everyone's Office 365. Yeah. So if you use a cloud service provider, there's a clause that refs that, and in that ref, you'll come across that C and G. Or the cloud service the provider cloud service requirements. Right. right, so we're regular uh, environments in the cloud, AWS, uh, Google Enterprise, and, uh, and, and Office 365, they won't surrender their physical hard drives. Nope. And exactly. it's usually because it's shared space yeah, on they a SAN somewhere, it's virtualized, right? But if you're in the, the GCC high or better cloud environment in Office 365, you have dedicated hard drives for your system. Correct. Yeah. So they can ac actually remove those and hand those and over. Hand those so, and the reason you brought that up a is breach if there was a breach. Yeah. I mean, it's not like if they're going to come out. If there's a breach investigation and they decide they want them. Then they want them. And that's why you have to be a FedRAMP yep. compliant yep. Um, cloud provider for your GCC high. Office 365, because yeah. then you meet the federal requirement. For yeah. that particular piece, there's a yeah. lot more. There's a yeah, lot of pieces There's even there, the administrative, yeah. so the staff that they use to administer that environment is clear. There's a whole lot of other stuff in the background. Um, maybe a quick point of note that you, when you are supplying your documentation to the government and you are in a FedRAMP environment, part of your technical control for your shared responsibilities documentation is the audit letter that your uh, cloud service provider gets about their certifications, right. and that satisfies a lot of those technical controls. I think 50 or 60 of them we talked about. Well, that, there's one of those auditors in one of your other slides there. There's four, 40 auditors or so, and Coal Fire is one of them. That, right. That provided that for Office 365, right. a yeah. letter of attestation saying, we're FedRAMP monitored or better in this environment, so that your shared controls for the cloud are covered. Right. But Not shared, just the letter. By the way, you still need to have a policy form. Yeah, there's still, still work that you need to do on your side. And maybe MFA, they enable it, you've got to turn it on. So there's still stuff that you have to do on your side of those controls, but they're audited on the control. You don't have visibility on what right. they've done right. on their side. So the letter provides your level of attention. Yeah, but, but, that yeah, but that doesn't get you off the hook. That just takes care of Office 365 GCC. Yes, sir. What, about, what about if you're writing code? What about if you're, doing, oh, if you're an Lord. architect? What if, uh, if, you're, if you're designing <laughs> things for the military? Right. What if that's sure, all, yeah, all your information. All, all your yeah. different files, your share files, all the stuff that you're doing, all your engineering drawings, yeah. all that, that stuff isn't covered by that little letter from... Yeah, from, you want to move that up into your you got to move that up. Sure. You know, does that mean you're... In FedRAM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, now, if you've got in your little data center in a closet somewhere down the hall... Good luck with good that. Good luck with yeah. that one. How's yeah. that? That's, you're not... You're, you've already in, in system it's trouble. on your phone. Or it's on your phone. Your oh, phone. Yeah. Another yeah. problem. Come so, on. So, hey, if you're on site, you're I looking at the I hope this is a wake-up call for anyone that's doing federal government yeah. contract. Your yeah. contracting officer should be looking at this stuff and, right now. And now we're going to... If you haven't gotten the wake-up call in the last couple years that we've been really dealing with this, now right? Now they're going to turn up the, at the volume. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There it goes. Here's your, here's your push. So we'll talk about that these next 10 minutes or so. Give us the next um, slide five, I think it is. CMMC. Yeah. This is the change to the game. Okay, let's, let's do the, the... CMMC. Cybersecurity Maturity Model, model Certification. Sorry. Certification. So you That's need a different to have animal. this. So there was self-attestation. Now we're going to have a certification level that's going to be conducted by... An auditor. Right. Can we can we say why really quick? I mean, there's there's oh, a let's lot of say self why. Yeah. There's a lot of self attestation yes. out there. A lot of people kind of fudge the numbers, right? And say we're yeah, covered, or and they use somebody else's security plan and say, look, we're covered. Contracting officers not really paying attention. Someone was caught. A company that shall be nameless. Yes, thank and you. And was charged, I think, three quarters of a million dollars. Something like that. Whistleblower. Uh, from a whistleblower that yeah. says that we're not really covered, yep. we, we lied, and they, sure. they came back checking, sure enough. What? So There was a huge one in the paper, <clears throat> even Cisco had a whistleblower, eight million. Well, they settled with him. Eight million is not going to kill Cisco, but three quarters of a million, million could kill, kill a small business. That'll small business. kill a small business yeah. for good, yeah. So let's look at these levels. So the, the, the maturity model certification um, right here. So up through level three, that's that first 110 controls that we talked about. Correct. The 800 171 as it a. stands. Yes. Yeah. Revision one. It's going to change. It's going to change. It may change. change. <laughs> it may change. No, we'll it will change. Yeah. It's a change in January. Revision B, right there. You see the revision yeah. B in the second one. Another 30 controls have been introduced in the last three months. So we shouldn't scare people. Those, those oh, extra yeah, we controls. Should we should scare for, people. For level four <laughs> and five, you need to be a serious player. Oh, yeah. This, I mean, you yeah. need a, a security You're a operation Boeing. center. Is that You're a Lucky Martin. Martin. Yeah. Martin. Yeah. You're at Raytheon. Raytheon. You're up in those spaces, right? Right, right. But... But, Interesting. But remember, think about this, you said it earlier, <coughs> but if you're a sub to one of them... Then you need to be. Then you need to if be. Yeah. 
yeah. if you're participating as a part of their project or bet. program. Now they're they're going to flow that SLC down to they you. Could, they could share their that's, SLC, that's their SSP and all of that. You could sign off on it, a lot of that stuff. But you're still going to have to comply with those 110, well, 110 plus. Yeah. You're, they're going to want to go maybe walk into your office. Do you have access control? Do you have logs that mm -hmm. log in all of your guests? Do you, do you walk your visitors around and stay with them all the time? I mean, all that stuff. I is think they're going to ask for your audit document, which will be produced. We have a timeline. We'll sort of talk about all that last. Okay. Let's look at the vision. The next slide is sort of the vision for where we are today. So the CMM derived sources, right? So notice how the Fed's gone at, at the lower level and said, listen, we've, we're trying to incorporate a lot of these other references because we have people outside of the U.S. that need to that work with our partners, right? Our, yes. D, our defense industrial based partners. And so you see Australia's Essential 8, UK Cyber Essentials down there. So. You see some of that now be going to be reft in the initial, and actually I think it maps anyway because most see of this on that list. Most I wonder why <laughs> most of this maps to 853, which maps to the Australia. It's sort of all this mapping sort of been done, but interestingly, these derived sources pending um, uh, the CMM. I think they may get outside of this a bit or go a bit deeper. I think that that's still open. Yeah. Um, you know, I listened to that the broadcast the other day from um, the Development Center and. You know, they, they're, they're quite a ways up the road, but I feel like many more changes could come. And I think to your point, the higher level, the risk of the work that you're doing is represented. Yeah. You know, you, you could have been, ah, we'll consider you a level two. You may find yourself at level four. So let's throw two more acronyms into So if you're doing, if you're out there and you're doing CUI. <laughs> controlled unclassified information. Yeah. Or CDI. Controlled defense information. If you're in, if you, which any derives of those, from each other. Yeah, if those, any of those show up on any of your contracts or anything you're doing, you got to comply. You, you're, that's it right there. Now, the argument always applied from small businesses is, okay, it's on our contract, but we don't actually handle that data. And that's, that's a, a misnomer. So yes. it's not just the data. Uh, the contract officer will say, this is what we consider CUI or CDI. Yeah. But you yourself got to know that it's not just the data that he's giving you or she's giving you, it's what you can create. And it's, if you create something that's innocuous, yep. another big word, if it's harmless, innocuous. right? Um, but you create a lot of those things, you put them together, the aggregate or the total of all those things together could be yes. harmful Control. to the government sure. and it's, yeah, and, it's control and, and the project that you're working on. Right, right. Yeah, hundred percent agree. That's um, that's sort of the world that I live in, where I, as security documents for a facility, I have network information, I have placement information, maybe a DMARC information, and when you put all that together, that that could be all used to yeah. help something an as harmless as the floor plans to buildings for there janitorial you go. You just contracts. Just took it right out of my head. Those, yeah. those, you can look to see uh, where the biggest offices are. Those are the officers. Mm -hmm highest ranking officers, you can see where the armory is and the motor T and the fence and the ingress and egress for the base, right? So just a janitorial contract with floor plans, that's CUI. Yep, mm. there you go. So yeah, and look at the, I'm looking at architectural firms in this town that are doing work. I mean, I don't know of any that I know are even kind of even looking at this oh, at this no. point. There's, it amazes me how much, how many of these A&E plans are downloadable from a uh, portal that doesn't have HTTPS. And I hate blah, to say blah, this, blah. but in most of the companies I work with, the first barrier I have to overcome is not the C-level executives, it's the legal department. Wow. Oh, yeah. I have to walk the contract into the legal department and show them the exact clause and the exact rules they're not complying with. And then I have to have a 20 or 30 minute discussion on the legalese mm -hmm. because they try to say, no, no, this doesn't apply to us. <laughs> like, that, that's great. But yeah. Go ahead. No defense. Go ahead. You, you say, take that position. And at the next year, when you when you don't get any contracts or RFI, <laughs> then the legal department can go, well, I'm unemployed now because my company's got no work. No work. Really good point. Right. And, and, and here's what the government is saying. As the audit capacity rolls out across the defense industrial base sector, okay, your contracts that get issued will have a required level of auditability. So when level for one. you to bid on that contract, you will have to supply the document demonstrating that you've been audited to that level of compliance. Yeah. And certified. Let's you're, and you're CMMC. That's and you're right. assigned a level. And you're assigned a level. Yes. And you have to have your SSP. System security, security plan. plan. And all the related 110 plus items taken care of. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all there and all in place by what? Date well, let's RFI? look at the timeline. Listen, yeah. what's supposed to be done now, you're self-attesting that it's done now. Right, right. right. But once they so, come to audit you... That's why I can't retire. Imagine, <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you have a... Imagine if you've self-attested that you're fully compliant and the audit finds you at level one. You could lose contracts or not be offered those same contracts come next September. So here's the government's timeline. So they've, 
They're, they they look to have that leveling criteria that we had that little block on the right, all the all the uh, mm -hmm. other things that they want to feed think, into yeah. this, um, yeah. defined by the end of August, which this is mid August now, so we're yeah. getting there. End right? of August this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is this is coming right up. Yeah. So you can see our current. The red is our current timeline in July, yeah. actually. Okay, so there you go. where there. they're starting to incorporate this integrity and availability, uh, complete the the uh, information and assurance incorporation. Threat update one, threat update two. You can see how they're, they're modeling. They're looking for ease of use. These are all the things on the left-hand side that you can tell that they're taking into consideration because for small business, this is a nightmare. Yep. And it's been a nightmare that you've been living with for three years now. Almost but, five. Yeah. But now we're going to go test yes. what kind of dreams you're really having. Maybe right. we should tell the audience about the, the plans. So the DOD sure. is going to go is pick on? a third-party uh, Nonprofit, nonprofit to be the train the trainer to train, train, yeah. to, yes. to, to to train, train the auditors, these, uh, the auditors, right? And so there are no auditors at this point. There's there no auditors. Right? No auditors. Jump yeah. on the bandwagon. There's, and there's no uh, criteria for uh, what they'll third, be auditing and no, things like that. There's so none of that. the 800-171 version B is supposed to come out in September, and that's when the third-party auditors are supposed to be picked at nonprofit. Yeah. And by January of next year, we're supposed to actually be training, training those auditors. Training the auditors. May I happen to know one that might be? Right. An I'm going to try my best to get and on that so list. So maybe yeah. someone in this room will be an auditor. Might, I don't know. Might be an auditor. Uh, I'm so not going to go down we that. We definitely path. need some some local auditors in Hawaii. I mean, we're going to have to have some people that that spend that that money to get themselves certified to be auditors. How many contractors are impacted by this in Hawaii? Uh, you know, and just. I think country. there's about 10,000 DIB contractors. They said no, 300,000. Well, total across the country. Across yeah. the country, 300,000 yeah. contractors. It will have to be audited by, well, if you want RFIs according to their schedule. Next September. No, for contract, for RFI June. Yeah, yeah. June of next year. June yeah, of next sure. year. So yeah. 300,000 contractors are going to have to be audited by June of next year when we don't even have auditors it's yet. going to be tough. Who are trained. That's going to be a push. Yeah, that's going to be. There's a bit of a challenge. So what we're professing <laughs> is to get in line with someone you believe that's going to go through and become an auditor, try to get high on their priority list so you can be audited. I think there will be an advantage to you to offer your services to the government. If you are assured at a level three, you'll be able to par, you know, offer yourself to participate in those level right. three contract but offerings. get your stuff done now. You've got... It's, to roll out all these 110 criteria. Yeah, the auditors just check you. You're, they don't you do the work. You've got to start doing yeah. that now because oh, it doesn't yeah. start, it's going to cost you money that you sh might be able to get reimbursed back by the government when you get contracts. Oh, later. Later. <laughs> later. But you're going to have to put some money up front here. And yeah. it, it could be substan substantial depending on the size of your company or how far behind you are. Right? I'm, I'm amazed that all the people in Hawaii think this is really isn't going to be a big thing, but we have 11 military bases in the state. Oh, it's huge. I mean, we do a lot of DOD How many work. subcontractors? So, oh, my God, how many? I hope you learned something today. If you didn't learn enough, catch up with me and Dave. We're going to be on the Cyber Underground on Friday. We're going to talk about this same more. We'll try to hash it out a little broader for you. What time is that? It's going to be uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Friday, Hawaii time. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope it was eventful for you. It was definitely eventful for us, Gordo. Thanks for dropping my in. My pleasure. Any time, Dave, thanks for the support. You bet. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you out there. Stay safe. Aloha.